Okay, so welcome to this next video on the mitochondria and calcium. Okay, so in the previous video, what we've seen is that uh, in, the mito in the mitochondrial membrane, uh, you have one channel which is a uniporter, namely the mitochondrial calcium uniporter, which allows calcium to move from the intermembrane space into the matrix. And then you also have a, uh, another um, another uh, well a pump this time that's a channel this is a pump which basically is going to move calcium against its electrochemical gradient because the calcium wants to go into the matrix its electrochemical gradient is pushing it into the uh, matrix uh, so this is a pump because it's moving it against its electrochemical gradient it uses secondary active transport because it uses the sodium concentration and the sodium electrical gradient as well uh, so sodium wants to move into the matrix and basically you allow sodium to move in in exchange for moving a calcium out so that's the sodium calcium exchange. Right, okay, so now what I want to do is have a little bit more of a study of this mitochondrial calcium uniporter, because that's new. We've studied the sodium calcium exchanger before, but this is a new, uh, a new beast. So we'll study that first, then what we'll do is we'll look at what actually happens if cytosolic calcium goes up, how does that affect uh, the concentration of calcium in the mitochondria. Okay, so firstly, this mitochondrial calcium uniporter then. So what is the structure of the mitochondrial calcium uniporter? So the MCU is what we're looking at. Well, it's a dimer, basically. It's made up of two polypeptides. And those two polypeptides have a membrane-spanning structure that looks something like this. They have one membrane-spanning alpha helix, a loop which doesn't quite make it through the membrane, and then another membrane-spanning alpha helix. Now, this is a very typical structure for an ion channel. So this is a this is a single polypeptide. So this is a single subunit making up the channel, uh, and basically you put two of these together um, to make the channel. So I'll I'll draw the channel like so. If we draw it in, with this sphere like so, oh, sorry, cylinder, not a sphere then the pores down the middle, and basically you've made it, made it up of these two subunits, like so. So um, here's one of these subunits, and uh, the, so that's one, and then there's another one, a second one. And basically you use two of these, two of these proteins to make each of the halves, basically. So this pink bit is one of these, this orange bit is one of these, and they come together and make uh, a pore, basically, through which calcium can move. Right, okay, uh, so that's uh, the actual pore. Now, these, these channels have another little interesting thing, which is that they can associate with auxiliary subunits which modulate their function, basically. So, uh, the subunit here can associate, basically, with two other proteins. And each subunit can do this. So this orange subunit can associate with two proteins, and the pink subunit can also associate with two proteins. So these two proteins are known as uh, MiQ1 and MiQ2. Okay, so let me put those in. Um, so this is uh, MiQ2 here, this smaller one, which is closer to the subunit, MiQ2. And uh, this is MiQ1. Uh, MiQ1. Let me write those bigger because they're probably not visible under this bad light. So this is MiQ1, M I C U 1. And this one is M I C U 1. M I C U 2, rather, MiQ2. Right, okay, so MiQ2. Has a, is it, MiQ2's usual function is if cytosolic calcium is at its usual very low level, then MiQ2 has no calcium bound to it. And basically, what MiQ2 does when it has no calcium bound to it is that it um, it causes the MCU subunit here, or the MCU protein, which makes up this MCU channel, well, makes up half of it anyway, it causes it to adopt the closed conformation. So basically, when um, calcium in the cytosol is no at its normal level of 100 nanomolar, uh, basically what that means is that MiQ has no calcium bound to it. MiQ's activity is then to... Um, cause this channel to close. So the MCU is kept closed uh, by, um, it's kept closed by uh, MiQ2. 
Okay, right. Uh, now, uh, let me show you where the calcium binding domains on both MiQ1 and MiQ2 are. So let's draw them out again over here. So basically, on the cytosolic portion of MiQ1 and MiQ2, what you have is one of these EF domains where they have dimerized. You have two EF, uh, EF hands, rather, uh, very close together. So I'll draw it like that, but maybe I'll put them going in and joining into the protein like that. So you have two of these EF uh, hand domains uh, on the cytosolic side of this MiQ2 protein. So remember, these proteins will be sitting in the inner mitochondrial membrane, like so. So here's MiQ2. So these EF hands will be up here, basically. They'll be uh, on the um, on this side, rather than facing onto the lumen. They're the bits facing onto the uh, intermembrane space, but then, of course, the outer mitochondrial membrane is very permeable, so effectively, the, outer uh, the intermembrane space is... Um, its calcium level is in equilibrium with the um, uh, cytosolic calcium level. All right, now MCU1, MiQ1, also has two EF hand domains. So here is MCU1, and it also has two EF hand domains. Okay, so these are calcium binding domains, uh, and they're basically just polypeptides uh, which form these loops, and in this loop is where calcium will bind. And there are lots of acidic residues uh, in that polypeptide there, and those acidic residues donate their protons away and then get a negative charge, so they can interact with calcium very nicely. Okay, so now let's have a look at what happens when calcium goes up in the cytosol. So if calcium goes up in the cytosol slash cytoplasm, they're the same thing, um, then it's going to also go up in the intermembrane space because of the permeability of the inter outer mitochondrial membrane. Okay, so calcium has gone up in this in an inter membrane space here. Calcium then is going to come and bind uh, in these EF hand domains, so two calciums is going to bind to each of the MiQ1 and MiQ2. So this is MiQ2 and this is MiQ1 over here. Uh, so two calcium ions are bound, one in each of the EF hands. So this is MiQ1 here, and this is MiQ2. Right, now, when calcium binds to MiQ2, it no longer inhibits the MCU protein, and that causes the MCU protein to adopt a conformation that opens the channel. Okay. Furthermore, when calcium binds to MiQ1, MiQ1 actually activates MCU to adopt the open conformation. So you've got a double whammy, basically, leading to this channel opening. So when calcium in the cytoplasm goes up, MCU opens. So calcium goes up, MCU opens. So the mitochondrial calcium uniporter opens. Right. Okay. And uh, what does that cause? That causes calcium in this matrix to go up in response to an increase in cytosolic calcium. Um, and you might wonder, well, surely the sodium calcium exchanger is just going to turn on and it's just going to extrude all the calcium again. And you would be right. The thing is, I told you that the maximum rate that this thing can operate at is 5,000 calcium ions per second. So 5,000 ions per second. Whereas channels, which is what this is, can conduct millions per second. So basically, this will let in calcium faster than this can extrude it again. So calcium will go up transiently in the, uh, in the um, matrix uh, if calcium goes up in the cytoplasm. Uh, at, and obviously, once calcium goes back down in the cytoplasm, it will stop coming in, and gradually the sodium calcium exchanger will then extrude it all again, and that will destroy the signal. But when calcium goes up in the cytosol, that causes calcium to go up in the matrix of the mitochondria as well, and it's because of the activation of this MCU channel uh, by, uh, well, by calcium binding to these EF hand domains of MiQ1 and MiQ2, uh, well, sorry, MiQ2 and MiQ1, and uh, calcium binding to the EF hand domains of MiQ2 stops its inhibition, and calcium binding to the EF hand domains of MiQ1 causes it to actually activate the MCU protein and then 
uh, that activates the MCU channel if both of the MCU proteins are activated. Okay, so that's how uh, concentrations, changing concentrations of calcium in the cytosol are um, related to changing concentrations of calcium in the mitochondria.